Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar of the month. And did, uh, today we're going to be talking about top SEO strategies to increase traffic to your design or remodel site in 2022. Now, if you did not watch the webinar from last month, which was on how to optimize your website, that was talking about once you have the traffic on your site, how to convert that traffic into sales. We're going to be talking today about how to drive traffic to your website. So you're going to need to also look at last month website as well, which is on our website, K-A-B-M-S, Kitchen and Bath Marketing Solutions.com under webinars. And if you look at March 2022, that was the webinar of the, of the month, how to optimize your website. So today we're going to be talking about SEO now. I'm going uh, to have to apologize a little bit. This is going to be a little technical, but it's for you to understand just the basics. But also, if you plan to do SEO on your own, what you need to know. OK, so let's get started. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of search engine optimization SEO for short. The fundamentals of SEO, how to optimize your website. We're, we're just going to do a quick overview. But again, look back at the webinar from last month, which we spent the whole time on how to optimize your website and the top SEO techniques. OK. Now, the hardest part about SEO is this fluidity. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you are in the design or model business, I would advise that you have someone else do SEO for you unless you have somebody on your team that understands it and that can keep up with it. Because one of the hardest parts of SEO is the fluidity, like I said, and the amount of updates that are constantly happening. If you can see here, this is from Search Engine Land, one of the top search engine publications sites out there that talks all about the updates and everything that's happening uh, with Google and the search engine. But they update their algorithm. Google updates their algorithm in between five to 600 times a year. Now, you can just imagine that is a lot of updates that you have to be on top of. Now, not all of this will affect each and every website. There's there's a portion that you will need to know about. But the fact that they update so much causes you to have to really know what's happening. And this is one of the reasons SEO costs so much, because it's a it's a fact of knowing what's happening in the update and making sure you're on top of it. So you can stay on top of your keywords. You can stay on top of your competition. So the fluidity is an issue and staying on top of it is vital. Now, I know SEO, but I actually have a team behind me that actually stays on top of this daily, weekly to know what's happening. So they know what, which updates affect our clients' websites, which ones does not. So if you do not have someone in-house that can tackle this, like I said, I would recommend that you either hire somebody to either do it for you in-house or you hire an outside agency to help you out with this, okay? So the importance of SEO, I'm gonna just give a brief overview of this. It provides credibility. The search engines helps you build that know, like, and trust. Helps you build, if you're on the top of the search for any of your terms, kitchen remodel, bath remodel, home remodel, design services, e-design, whatever that may be for you. If you're on page one, the end user will assume that you are credible. Now, that may be or may not be, but that is one of the factors that in the end user's eyes that if you're on top, if you're on page one for one of the search keywords, they're going to assume credibility. Once you're on page one, it also helps you bring in traffic. Now, I like to say when we talk to prospects, just because you're on page one and you are having traffic, it does not mean it's the right type of traffic either. So you have to really optimize your site. And that's why you need to look at the webinar from last month on how to really optimize your site. So you're driving the right type of traffic to your site. So, but if you're on page one and you're ranking for the right keywords, you can drive more traffic to your site. In essence, help you grow your business. It offers a better user experience because once you use SEO in your site, once you're using the principles, you're, you have a better user experience overall. And I'm explaining how throughout this webinar of how the user experience is approved when you're using SEO in your website. 
it gives you key insights into your prospects. So as you are driving traffic, you can now analyze who's actually coming to your website. What are they clicking on? Where are they clicking? How long are they staying on the page? What are they what are they typing in to find you? All of this is vital information to help you optimize your site and optimize what you want people to see. So you can at the same time learn more about them and learn what's working and what's not and optimize accordingly. So this gives you a lot of insight into your end user, your prospect, into what they're looking for, what they're typing in. So you can have a better user experience so that so you get the right type of traffic and you can convert them at the end of the day. And it also builds awareness. When you're on page one and when you're at the top, it's easier for you to get found. It's easier for people to start to recognize your name. And again, that starts to build that know, like, and trust. Okay. Some of the SEO fundamentals. There are three main aspects. You have the on-page SEO, the off-page SEO, and technical SEO. So on-page is everything, all of the changes you make on your site. And so that's where you have your content, about us, services, all of that information that's on your site. The off-page SEO, that's everybody that's linking to your website. That may be from Google My Business. That may be from Facebook, Yelp, Foursquare, Google, any of those sites that link to your website. And we're going to talk more about the link building aspect, but that's the off off-page SEO. And then the technical SEO, that's all of the alt tags, meta descriptions, all of the schema data that the search engines look at to read what your website is really about. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But no, there are three main aspects, the on-page, the off-page, and technical. Okay. So how does SEO work? So if you look at this image off to the side, you see here how you have the typical search. This is the keyword that you may have typed in, and this is what usually pulls up in the search engine. So first, you usually have the PPC. Those are the ads, pay-per-click. Those are the ads that individuals or corporations bought to be on the top of the search engines, okay? You can also be here through pay-per-click also, but that's not what we're talking about today. You have the map listings. This is Google My Business or Google Business Profile. This is for local search, for service-oriented businesses like we're talking about today with design and remodeling companies. This is where when somebody types in a keyword that applies to the services that you offer and they're in the location where you are, you have a chance to be in the map area, okay? That's here. And then you have the organic listing. This is most everybody knows about SEO. This is what they think of is the organic listing, the top 10 listing in search. OK, and that's what you have here. OK, and so you have your pay, you have your map and you have organic. All right. Next. So optimizing your website, you want to start with creating a Google My Business page or what they call now Google Business Profile. And that is creating a profile that is about your business, has all of the information that your website has as well, but it's another way to be found. And that's what we talked about, the map listing. That's how you get found in the map listing by having the Google My Business page. This is a free profile that you can create. So there should be no reason that you do not have a Google My Business or AKA Google Business Profile, you should, you should have one of these. You should have a profile at minimum. This is free to set up, easy to do, and it helps you start to create those listings that you're going to need that can then link back to your website. So when we talk about link building, this is one of the links, the Google Business Profile, that links back to your website and another way for you to be found in SEO. OK, and we actually have a guide that I'll share at the end of this where we have a walkthrough that takes you step by step on how to create your Google business profile and how to set it up and how to optimize it. So stay tuned. We're going to share that at the end of this presentation. Next, schema markup. So this is the really technical aspect. This is what Google uses 
to find out what your website is about. So it's the code, it's the alt tags, it's the meta descriptions, it's all of the all of the code that's in the back end of your website that lets the search engines know what is this website about. And we're going to talk about images, but the bots or the search engine bots do not read imagery. They do not read pixels, but they do read text. So the schema data or uh, or the art tags, meta descriptions or whatever that you have on your website and on your imagery, it lets the search bots know what is your website and what are the individual pages on the site about. So it can now adequately rank you for the right keyword. Uh, without that, it's hard for them to understand what it's about. Okay, so the schema data, like I said, is where all of this resides in terms of the search engines and how they read your website. NAP information. You want to make sure that your NAP, your name, address, and phone number are correct. So if you're adding on location, if you change location, you want to make sure that the name, address, and phone number is identical everywhere. And you need to also check, even if so, if you live on uh, Main Street, you want to make sure that street is either S-T dot or S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E so you, you either spell it out or it's abbreviated. That same thing with Boulevard or Lane. You can have Lane, L-A-N-E or L-N or Boulevard, B-L-V-D or you have it all spelled out. So you wanna make sure that wherever your name, phone number and address is, name, address, phone number, NAP, is on your website, it's identical to everywhere else it could be found, whether that be Facebook, Yelp, anywhere, okay? So that's vital, because anywhere it's not the same, that confuses the search engines and they may not relate you, or the search engines may not relate your name, address, and phone number to another one that has the same name, but the address may be a little different. The phone number may be an extension, but may not be the same one, may not have the same name. You may not have LLC at the end or where here you do. So you want to make sure everywhere on your website and across the web that the name, address, and phone number is identical. So you do not confuse the search box. This is one of the things that a lot of designers fail to do is they'll have a service page and they'll list the services there, but they will fail to actually have a page for each of the different services. This helps you because now you can really explain what the service is about and you can have long tail keywords, which we're going to talk about a little later, that people usually type in to find what the service is about. And it's easier for you to do that on a service page on when you break out each of your different services on the page as opposed to having everything on the services page, okay? So creating a different page for every service helps you because that's more content, that's more ways that you can add more long-term keywords to be found by your end users for the services that you offer. And it helps you to structure the, uh, the website the right way. And it helps the search engines really understand what your site is about and uh, the potential prospects that you're marketing to. Again, this, this is just an overview of optimizing your website. Like I said, last month, March 2022, we did a webinar on optimizing your website. So go to our website, Kitchen and Bath Marketing Solutions, KABMS.com go under webinars and under the March 2022, you'll see the optimizing your website webinar. That's a half hour long webinar that we get into depth. Like once you drive traffic, this is how you convert. So this is just an overview, but you want to go back to that webinar to really understand that. The important SEO techniques, the core web vitals. These are the metrics that the search engines measure your website by speed, responsiveness and visual stability. So you'll see here, we have a few of the web vitals, the core web vitals that they look at. So you can see speed is one of the top issues that the search engines look at. If your website loads slow, that's actually hurting you in terms of the search engine's eyes. They're looking at it as it's not a good user experience, it's too slow, 
you haven't really optimized your website for speed. Also, how responsive is it on different devices? Uh, is it mobile optimized? Does it take long to, if you click on something, if you click on a link, does it take a while for it to read? Where does it go? If you submit a form, does it take a while for it to register? So the responsiveness of the site is also a factor. And then the visual stability. Okay, what does the visual page or the content or the layout really look like? Is it visually appealing? Is there a lot going on? Is there a lot of animation that is hard to really figure out? Is it too cumbersome? Is it messy? Okay, so a clean layout really helps the user experience because it helps them know what they're looking for and it helps them find easier what they're looking for and, and what to click on as opposed to having everything haphazard all over the site and you don't know what to click on, you don't know what to do next. So visual stability is something else that the search engines look at, how visually appealing and user experience. You could really relate a lot of this to user experience. How easy is it for end users to find what they're looking for, okay? So these are some of the tools that you wanna look at. Google Search Console, you need to have on your site. Google Search Console and Google Analytics at a minimum, you wanna have these on your website. Google Search Console will tell you what is actually happening on your site and, and it'll actually give you suggestions for improvement. HP's Insight will tell you about the speed of your site. And then you have others, Lighthouse, Dev2s from Chrome, UX Report. A lot of these help you to optimize your website to make sure the speed is there in that you don't have any broken links and that the back end is where it needs to be. So this is helping you on a little bit of that technical aspect that we talk about. Google Passage Ranking. So in 2020, Google launched Passage, Passage Ranking, and this is where the search engines, or Google in particular, can look at a passage on your page, on, on any of the web pages without actually looking at the whole page. And it can break out that passage and rank just that passage without having to rank the whole page if it's not about that one passage. So this helps you because if you have on your home page, you may have a lot of information. You may have an overview of who you are, an overview of about us, overview of your services, overview of testimonials, overview of your portfolio. But in the about us, if you have a certain section or a certain passage that you may not have on the about us page that is really searched by end users, and we're going to teach you how to find out what they're searching for so you can write for that. But if you have a passage that stands out, you may have that passage ranked without having a whole home without having a whole home page ranked. And this is great for you because you still have chances without having your whole website ranked. You may have a chance to have passages of your website ranked. And that goes back to what people are typing in. And we're going to talk a little bit about that just a little later. Okay. So the focus should be on creating clear sections within the posts. And this is on the passage. You want to focus on incorporating keywords, long-term keywords, mainly we're going to talk about that, into the headings of the sections. And you want to have a clear understanding of the uh, of the subtopic of what, what is the end user typing in and, and how are you addressing their question or what they're typing in. So you can handle a lot of this in a blog post. That's the usual way a lot of passages are handled from the search engine side. Is through a blog because a blog you may write a lot uh, on the topic, but you may have certain passages that really stand out and really answer what the blog is about or answer what the end user is asking. So a blog is a great way to have the passage ranking on your site. Featured snippets. This is one of the holy grails of search. This is the zero, zero position. So if you look here, where I typed in how many times does Google update their algorithm? You can see here, this right here is right in position zero before you have any ads, before you have the organic listing and before you have the map listing as well. So usually the feature snippets are in a rectangular box or in an area and it's a list. 
and it's answering a question or it's answering what you may have asked in a list. So here, how to get more subscriber on YouTube. Here, they list out the steps. They list out the steps and they then at the end, they have the website that you can go to to find out more information. So feature snippets are a great way for you to be in position zero for one of your top keyword. So for instance, if somebody types in, what are the top colors in 2022 for remodeling? Or what are the top countertops? Or what are the top flooring options in 2022 for home remodeling? So those can be a list. That can be a list. Or, I mean, anything that they may ask that can be a list is a great way for you to have a feature snippet. So long-term keywords and queries is really what the search engine is looking for that you're answering in a, in a list format. And if you use questions that people may type in, just look at your own clients. When you talk to clients, a lot of time they ask questions that are asked that you may hear over and over again. Those are typical questions that you may want to answer someplace on your website or someplace where you have a list where that may that aspect or that passage may have a chance to be a feature snippet because you may have talked about what are the top colors for 2022 or what are the top ways to get lighting into a space. You may have listed that out and explained it. And that passage on your site, wherever it may be, can get a feature snippet under that question if asked. OK, so it's all about answering that question. And, and we're going to talk about how to find out what people are asking in, in just a minute. OK. Next, we're gonna talk about the EAT principle. So this stands for expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. So this is how the search engines grade you, okay? So you wanna know how Google establishes rank and how, and how to build your brand to make it authentic, trustworthy, and essential, and make you an expertise in the space. One of the best ways is through testimonials. So asking your customers or asking your clients for reviews. I always say one of the best times to ask a client for a review is at the big reveal. Now, you may not have a big reveal or you may have involved the client throughout the whole process. So there may not be a big reveal. But even at the end of the project, they're happy to get you out their house. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're happy to have their space back. So that is it may not be a big reveal, it may be a mini reveal, but it's at the end of the process. And hopefully you've done a great job and now you can ask them for a review. Great time. And if they're open for a video review, even better. But getting that review at that time that you can place and you can have them do the review on Google, on House, on BBB, Better Business Bureau, Yelp or wherever. But what you want to do, make it easy for them to write the review. So have a link that all they got to do is click on it and be able to write the review and be done earning high quality links from industry partners like the NKBA, National Kitchen and Bath Association, the AIA, American Institute of Architects, the ASID, American Society of Interior Designers, NARI, N-A-R-I, National Association of the Remodelers Industry. Any of these organizations or allied organizations or local, organ it doesn't have to be national organizations. It could be local, prominent local organizations in your area based on what you do that you can use to get links back from. Because a lot of times you can, for instance, the Chamber of Commerce. If you join the Chamber of Commerce in your area, you can ask them for a link back to your website. So now the search engines looks at that link from a reputable website, the Chamber of Commerce, linking back to you that, deal, that then starts to build authority on who you are and who your business is. So those type of links help you out. If you're active on public forums like Reddit or anything like that, and you contribute and write passages or answer questions, those are ways to build credibility. OK, so those are ways that you can use the EAT principle to really optimize where you are in your SEO. Long term keywords. So we talked a little bit about this. Now we're going to really delve into long term keywords. So usually designers and remodelers. When they ask, uh, when I ask or when our team asks, what are the keywords you want to be ranked for? They use the typical kitchen remodel, bath remodel, home remodel. Those are heavily searched keywords and very competitive, very competitive. 
the top of the top are going after those same keywords. So you want to make sure that you are using long term keywords as well as those, as well as your main keywords. But you want to use long term that it's easier for you to be found for. So, for instance, a Mediterranean kitchen remodel, historic or blue style contemporary kitchen remodel. See, so see, you see long tail. There's a number of different words in that. In, in that phrase that makes it long tail. And that is something that at the end of the day that end users type in. Usually don't just type in home remodel, bathroom model, kitchen remodel. They may type in, even at the basic, they may type in kitchen remodel in Chicago, Illinois, bathroom model in Los Angeles, California, home remodel in Dallas, Texas. So even by adding in the city and the state, that is long tail and it's more specific to your locale as opposed to just the typical kitchen remodel, bathroom model, home remodel, which are, are highly searched terms, but also very highly competitive. So using those longer term words, think about your own services that you do. What is it that you do that you that that can turn into that long term keyword? So if you do a color consultation, you can specify that to be a certain type of color or a certain type of style or a certain type of area, add that on to color consultation. Now you have a long-term keyword, okay? Make sure that you have those long-term keywords that you're also trying to rank for because it makes it easier for you to be found. And those long-term keywords are not as competitive as the major ones that everybody is shooting after. So I had talked about a few examples where we have here custom branded kitchen, are smart kitchens for luxury homes, DIY ideas for interior design. Those are longer term keywords as opposed to interior design, as opposed to smart kitchen. Okay, now you're making it a little longer and easier for you to rank for that key. User experience. This is one of the web vitals we talked about earlier. User experience is one of the things that the search engines look at on how to rank your website. How user friendly is your website? At the end of the day, that's what the search engines want to know, because if it's user friendly, then they're more apt to recommend you and rank you because the search engines know that when users, when end users come to your site, they're finding what they're looking for. When they click on the term that they search for and they stay on your site, they're not bouncing because bounce rate is another thing we had talked about. Look at the how to optimize your website, because I had talked about the bounce rate. In essence, if they type in something your site pops up and they click on it. And then within a few seconds, they get off of your website. That's a high bounce rate because they're not finding what they're looking for. So whatever term that they typed in and they clicked on your site to see, you were not addressing. And that's about user experience, making sure that when they click on your site, they find what they are looking for. And it's easy to maneuver throughout your website. User experience starts with mobile friendly. Over 85 to 90 percent of search starts on a mobile device. So you want to make sure your website is optimized for mobile first before desktop. And I had talked a lot about this. Like I said, go back to how to optimize your website on the webinar we did last month. We talked a lot about, about that. But make sure that it's mobile optimized first. Next, you want to ensure that the navigation is clear, concise easy to use, that people were able to find what they need to get to in an easy manner. They're not having to search all around. Page speed, how fast does everything load? When they click on the link, how fast does it load? When they hit submit on a submission form or anything on your site, how fast does that load? Interactivity, do the features on your site, get the user to interact with the content. So does the information on your site get them to Fill out the form, get them to click to the next page, get them to schedule a call with you, get them to sign up for your newsletter. How interactive is your site based on the content that's on your site? That's what they're also looking at to determine if you are reputable, if you're an expert, if you provide good information for the keyword that they're typing in that they should recommend and show your site more. OK, and how about the quality of the content? Do you have typos in it? Do you have broken links? Broken link mean when you click on the link, you head, there's no site, it goes nowhere. You have a 
you have an error code that this site is uh, is not found. So looking at that, making sure that you don't have any broken links on your site. Or is the content hard to understand? Is it bad grammar, hard to read? Just make sure for the user experience that you have good content, easy to read, easy to follow, and you'll be good. Backlinks. We had talked a little bit about this. Backlinks are one of the ways that the search engines look to view if you are a credible partner in the space. Backlinks is one of your eat principles as well. So like we had talked about, you want to focus on quality over quantity. It's not about how many backlinks you have or how many other sites are linking to you. It's about the quality of that link. So if you have a link from, like I said, the Chamber of Commerce, if you have a link from your local NKBA, so you may not have a link from the National Kitchen and Bath Association at the national level, but at the local level, you should ask to get a link there or from your local AIA or from your local ASIB or from your local NAR or any of these local organizations, even the BBB, Better Business Bureau, link from them. Okay, any of the local, regional, nationally recognized businesses that link back to your website shows that you are a quality business and you should have some type of authority in the space. Guest blog is a great way to link back to your sites. If you're writing an article for a reputable organization, you can usually ask or they will usually allow you to link back to your website as the author of that article. And that is a reputable link back. Online forums, like we had talked about, Reddit and others, if you contribute to forums, oftentimes not not just one time or two times, because if you're just in there to just do links, they're going to know that you're not in this for the long haul. But if you regularly contribute to the site, then they'll allow you to link back to your website. That's another powerful link from a reputable site. Okay. Leveraging social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Hiles, those are all credible social media platforms that when you post content, you can link link back to your website and that can help drive traffic to your website as well. And lastly, you want to look through your website to find any unlinked mentions that you can turn into links. So you may have talked about a certain page on your website or a certain service doing interlinking within your own site is also vital. You may have talked about a certain e-design or remodeling or a certain design service or remodeling service that you do that you may not have talked about on services page. As I talked about, if you create a page and then you link to that someplace on the homepage, now you're in interlinking. You're doing internal linking within your site. And that's also important. So make sure that you do that because what that does is that that creates more information for end users to find and for them to stay longer on your website. So if they find an article or on a blog that's on your website, if you talk about certain aspects of services that you do and you interlink to those service pages, now they're more apt to go to that page, spend longer on your website. Now you're starting to build that authority that you're looking for the search engines to grant you. Image and alt tags. This is one of the easiest ways that designers and remodelers can actually optimize their site and for SEO is through imagery. A lot of times I see designers and remodelers add a lot of portfolio pictures, pictures of their projects, imagery, professional, great photography, but they do not name it. They do not do alt tags. They do not do descriptions. Remember, search engine bots do not read imagery. They, they do not read the pixels of the image. They read the content. So for all of the images, what you want to do, you want to have an alt tag, what the image is about, what the, what the title, what the name is, and have a short description, which you can have keywords, which hopefully you can have long-term keywords in there. Because what had happened if you see here when I typed in kitchen and bath showrooms, usually people have it on all. And this is what you find. You'll find the ads, you'll find the maps, and then the organic listings. Some people often type in images. And when you do images, now you get imagery. That same imagery could be images that are on your website. And But the only way that you can end up here 
is if you have alt tags descriptions of your images that pertain to the keywords. And so now in your local area or anywhere, now when they click on images, as opposed to all, you have a chance for your imagery to show up here. And that is a lot of things designers and remodelers are not doing. That's the easy, easier way for you to get your imagery and your site to drive traffic. You want to make sure you have high quality images first. And then when you name the image, either all tags or description, you're using relevant keywords. OK, long term keywords. You want to make sure they're clear and it ties back into the image that is being shown. You want to compress your image because that's another thing. Remember, we talked about speed. If you have a lot of images and they're large, now that slows down your website. But if you compress the image, a lot of the times it still holds on to the quality, but the speed of your site increases. OK, and we have talked about image alt tags and make sure that you're using relevant information on the keywords. OK, when necessary. OK, so some of the compression image compression tools that you can use that we always recommend is tiny JPG, tiny PNG. And you also have Scoosh. And there's a number of uh, sites and apps out there, but you want to use one of these to compress the image so it holds on to the image quality, but the size is decreased so the speed does not slow down your website. So, so the size does not slow down the speed of your website. Content. This is the mecca for SEO content. This is where a lot of SEO starts. Okay, so you want to make sure that the content on your website is reputable, readable, and quality. Whatever you do, make sure it's reputable, readable, and has good quality, okay? The content should be a balance of words, short and lost instances, active and passive voice length, and you wanna also, if possible, have in list because we talked about the featured snippets. Because especially on blog posts, when you talk about a certain topic that is apt to having some type of list, you want to have that in there because there's a chance that could be a future snippet. So the longer and more informative content, the better chance you have of achieving rank in the search engines. One of the best sites I recommend to our own clients that either do their own SEO or we consult with them is answerthepublic.com. So what are so that tells you the questions that people are typing in. So you could type in bathroom model, kitchen model, and it'll tell you what are the typical questions people are typing in. Now that you know those typical questions, now you can write content that answers those questions. So now you have a better chance of being ranked for that long term keyword or for that keyword. OK. Our last SEO technique. Google My Business or Google Business Profile. So this is the map listings. And you want to make sure at a minimum you, ha you have a profile. Like I said, free to create. You want to make sure to create this profile. The search engines actually look at this and what you have in there. You want to try to keep it up to date as, as much as you can. And add in new content if you if you have a change in hours for the holidays, add that in new images for any new projects you may have. You want to try to keep it as fresh as you can, as often as you can, because this is another element that the search engines use to relate to your credibility as a business. And it also drives traffic back to your website. So if you look at this link here, if you head to our website, there's a guide that we have on how to set up your Google My Business profile. It takes you step by step on how to set everything up. Check this out. If you have any questions, let us know and we'll be happy to help you there. So last but not least, this is a SEO checklist. This checklist goes over the basics you need to have over keyword research, technical SEO, on-page SEO, off-page SEO. So these are the main things that we went over in this presentation that are on this checklist to help you keep you uh, accountable to what you need to do. So now, like I said, there's a lot of information I, I went over. A lot of it was technical, as I will reiterate, unless you have somebody in-house that knows SEO or that is that is dedicated to doing SEO for your firm, 
I would recommend that you either hire somebody in-house to do that or you hire an agency to do that. And we will be happy to help with that. We have been in this industry for over eight years. Backgrounds as the owner, I'm an architect. So I've been in the industry for over 20 years. So I know the industry. I know the terminology. We are the gap between the design industry, marketing, and your end user. Okay. And so we know how to relate all that and get you the ideal client that you want. Because a lot of the times what we hear is that when our clients come to us, they do PPC or they do SEO. PPC is pay-per-click or they do SEO search engine optimization or, or they do any type of marketing. They say, well, we get calls and we get leads, but it's not the right type of lead for us. If you do SEO the right way, you will drive the right type of traffic to your site. SEO is a long-term play. Over the long haul, there are a few things out there that can beat SEO in terms of lead generation, brand awareness, and helping you market your business. So SEO is a great way. So reach out to us if we can help you at all, or just if you have any questions. Even if you don't want to use us, reach out to us and look at our website. We have a resource library that has a wealth of information and we have training videos. We have all of these webinars, like I had talked about webinar. We do a webinar every month. The webinar we did last month on how to optimize your website. Look at that webinar. It talks a lot about once you drive the traffic, how to convert that traffic. So look at our website for the resource library kitchen and bath marketing solutions.com or kadms.com. Look at resource library, wealth of information, training to help you out. And if you need help with any of this SEO, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to talk to you to see how we can help or if we can help do it on your behalf, we'll be happy to do it. So reach out to us at this information here at, at the email. You can email me directly or you can call us and we'll be happy to help you out. Next month, we're going to do a webinar on email marketing. I hear a lot about email is dead. That's not true. We have a lot of clients that are having a lot of success with email marketing. I'm going to talk to you about how they are having success and how you can have success in your email marketing. We hope you enjoyed this SEO session. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. And we hope you have a great day and amazing week. And we hope to see you all here next month for our webinar of the month. Have a good day.